Hello and good evening. You're joining us here at 9 p.m. with the news. I'm Bhavna Naya. Let's start this bulletin with the top five headlines. Prime Minister Modi flags of development projects in Gujarat lays foundation stone of country's first bulk drug park in Bharuch district. Inaugurates educational complex in Ahmedabad. Samajwadi leader and former Defence Minister Mulayam Singh Yadav passes away. President, Vice President, Prime Minister express grief. Funeral in Safai on Tuesday. State government declares three-day mourning. After Delhi ends, yeah, heavy rains disrupt life in Uttar Pradesh. Yellow alert for rain in Telangana for next two days. Three American economists, including former chairman of Federal Reserve, awarded Nobel Prize in Economics. And Russia attacks many Ukrainian cities, including Kiev. President Putin confirms missile attacks. G7 group holds emergency meeting. And after the top headlines, a quick look now at our Flash News segment. Union Minister Bhupendra Yadav Research Centre is working on compassion-based development. India offers huge opportunities and enabling environment through ease of doing business, says Union Minister Piyush Goyal. Supreme Court not to undertake further deliberations on 10 names identified for Apex Court judges. Law Ministry has requested Chief Justice of India, Uday Umesh Lalit, to nominate successor. Women and Child Development Ministry to hold national conference on skilling in non-traditional livelihood under Betia Bane Kushal on October 11. Indian Railway plans 1,000 over bridges and underpasses in dedicated freight corridor to prevent accidents at railway crossings. Supreme Court refuses to lift ban on firecrackers in Delhi. Delhi Police file FIR against organizers of VHP's Virat Hindu Sabha meeting under scanner over alleged hate speeches. Malaysia's Prime Minister Ismail Sabri Yaqub dissolves parliament, calls for snap polls. China imposes fresh lockdowns after new daily COVID-19 cases triple during week-long holiday. And India qualify for 2023 AFC U17 Asian Cup by finishing as one of their six best second-ranked teams despite losing to Saudi Arabia by 1-2. Starting with the top story of the day, Prime Minister Narendra Modi inaugurated and laid foundation stones of eight developmental projects worth Rs 1,460 crore in Gujarat's Jamnagar today. Prime Minister Modi said that from Bharuch to Jamnagar, the experience of boosting the prosperity and development of Gujarat is fulfilling. He also congratulated the people of the state for the projects related to water, electricity and connectivity. जलो संकल्प जन शक्ति ज्ञान शक्ति जल शक्ति ऊर्जा शक्ति अन्य रक्षा शक्ति आ पांच संकल्पों ना स्तंभ पर आ गुजरात नी भव्य इमारत मजबूती साथे मक्कमता साथे नवी उचाइयों सर करी रही जवाइयों Continuing, Prime Minister Narendra Modi dedicated and laid the foundation stone of several projects worth over 8,000 crore rupees in Bharuch district of Gujarat. Laying the foundation stone of India's first bulk drug park in Bharuch, the Prime Minister said that earlier India was at the 10th spot in terms of economy. However, today India is the fifth largest economy in the world. Prime Minister Modi asserted that during the time of the COVID pandemic, the world realized the importance of Indian pharma sector. The project will play a key role in ensuring import substitution and make India self-reliant for bulk drugs. Prime Minister Modi also laid foundation stone for one agro-food park, seafood park and MSME park. 
He also dedicated 800 TPD caustic soda plant at the hedge. मारे गुजरात में नक्सलवाद ने पैसा वाला थी देवो मारे मारा आदिवासी भाइयों बहनों ने जिंदगी बचा भी छे मारे ऐमला जीवन मा आ प्रकार नी बीमारी लगू से ना बाटे मेहनत कर भी छे अनेकला माटे उमर गांव थे अंबाजी आदिवासी पट्टा मा विकास नी आपने बिड़ू उठायो अने मारे संतोष साधे क्या हुचे के मारा � Prime Minister Modi said that only those societies that focus on education will succeed. Prime Minister also inaugurated an educational complex near Ahmedabad that will provide needy students with facilities for holistic development. He emphasized on ways to make education more accessible to the youth. Prime Minister expressed happiness that more youngsters are focusing on medicine, engineering and other such streams. At the same time, he also stressed on the importance of skill development. The Prime Minister is on a three-day visit to Paul Pound Gujarat from Sunday. Let's listen in. Tame Duniama Kaipana Biaskaro and a Bharatna Kune Kuna Biaskaro. E Samajoj Agal Avache J Samaj Sikhande Pratvik Tapi. Doctor Vak engineer Abututo a Mar Karin Kak Dekai. परंतु धीरे धीरे में बदलाव आयो आज समाज में पोता मेड़े आगवा आना अपनी नजरे चढ़े आज बड़ी शक्ति आखिर समाज की ताकत बनती हो Moving on, Samajwadi Party Supremo and three time Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Mulayam Singh Yadav passed away today after prolonged illness. He was 82. Yadav was admitted to the intensive care unit of the Medanta Hospital in Gurugram on 2nd October. President, Vice President, Prime Minister, UP Chief Minister and many other political leaders have expressed grief on his death. Prime Minister Modi said he devoted his life towards popularizing ideals of Jay Prakash Narayan and Raman Hoylohia. Mulayam Singh Ji ka wo aashirwaad kuch salha ke do shabda वो आज भी मेरी अमानत है और मुलायम सिंह जी के विशेषता रही कि 2013 में मुझे उन्होंने जो आशीर्वाद दिया था उसमें कभी भी उतार चढ़ाव नहीं आने दिया His mortal remains have been brought to his native village Sefa in Uttar Pradesh Itawa district where his last rites will be held tomorrow. UP Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath, Jal Shakti Minister Swatantra Dev Singh and several other senior leaders arrived in Sefai ahead of the funeral. Three days of state mourning has been announced in Uttar Pradesh. Union Home Minister Amit Shah went to the hospital to pay condolences. He met with Mulayam Singh Yadav's family members, including his son and former UP Chief Minister Akhilesh Yadav. He hailed the former Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister as a champion of democracy who raised his voice during the emergency. Lok Sabha Speaker Om Birla also paid his tributes to the veteran leader. Samajwadi Neta, Jan Neta, Mulayam Singh Ji Yadav ke nidhan par, mein गहन शोक व्यक्त करता हूं राष्ट्रवाद लोकतंत्र के सिद्धांतों पर चलने वाले और जिन्होंने समाजवाद की मुखर आवाज बने जो जयप्रकाश नारायण लोहिया जी के सिद्धांतों पर चलकर गरीब वंचित लोगों की जिन्होंने जिंदगी भर सेवा की एक समाजवाद का एक स्तंभ आज हमारे बीच बने रहे Former Congress President Rahul Gandhi held a prayer meeting to pay tribute to Samajwadi Party Patriarch Mulayam Singh Yadav in Hiryur in Karnataka during his Bharat Jodo Yatra. He described Yadav as a true warrior of grassroots politics. Mulayam Singh Yadav was among the prominent political faces of the country and a leading opposition force. One of Uttar Pradesh's top politicians, Mulayam Singh, first became an MLA in 1967. 
He was elected 10 times as an MLA and 7 times as Lok Sabha MP. He became the Chief Minister of Uttar Pradesh thrice in 1989, 1993 and 2003. He was also the Defence Minister from 1996 to 1998. And briefly, he even appeared to have a shot at the Prime Minister's post. Influenced by socialist leader Ram Manohar Lohia, Yadav founded the Samajwadi Party in 1992. For decades, he enjoyed the stature of a national leader, but UP largely remained the Akhara where he played out his politics. In 2017, Mulayam Singh Yadav passed on the mantle to his son, Akhilesh Yadav. However, he remained Netaji to the party leaders. But the monsoon mayhem in the country, incessant rains in Uttar Pradesh have caused a flood-like situation in many districts. Many low-lying areas were submerged after the water level in many rivers rose to alarming levels. Unseasonal rains also brought down the temperatures in the state. The administration ordered the closure of all government and private schools. The state government has instructed officials to carry out relief. The water level of Saryu River rose due to heavy rains in Ayodhya. In Telangana, moderate to heavy rainfall was recorded at many places in the last 24 hours. The Meteorological Department has issued a yellow alert of moderate to heavy rainfall for the next four days in Adilabad, Mancherial, Nirmal, Nizamabad, Yadadri, Bhuvnagiri, Rangareddy, Hyderabad, Malkajgiri, Vikarabad, Sangara Reddy, Medak, Mahbub Nagar, and Vanaparthi. Meanwhile, the local administration has asked people to remain alert as reservoirs in many districts are full. And now let's take a look at more news from across the nation. Two terrorists were killed on Monday in an encounter with the security forces in the Tangpawa village of Kokarnag in the Anantnag district of Jammu and Kashmir. The encounter broke out on Sunday night. One more terrorist is believed to be hiding in the area. The identity of the terrorist and the organization is yet to be ascertained. Bodies of five more people killed in avalanche near Uttarkashi were brought to ITBP camp in Matli. Efforts to locate the two missing climbers are being hampered by incessant snowfall in the area. The discovery of five more bodies on today takes the number of bodies brought down from the summit camp so far to 26. The Indian parliamentary delegation led by Harivansh, Deputy Chairman Rajya Sabha, will participate in the 145th Conference of the Inter-Parliamentary Union to be held in Kagali, Rwanda from October 11th to October 15th. Portals of the Sikh shrine of Hemkund Sahib in the Garhwal Himalayas were closed on Monday for winter, defying the severe chill caused by heavy snowfall in the area for the past few days. Around 1,400 devotees thronged the shrine to witness its ceremonial closure. Nearly 2.25 lakh devotees visited the shrine this season. India's space economy is likely to be worth nearly 13 billion US dollars by 2025 with the satellite launch services segment set to witness the fastest growth spurred by increasing private participation. According to a report by the Indian Space Association and Ernest & Young, the growing demand for smaller satellites is set to boost satellite manufacturing in the country and will attract global startups in the sector to help incubate space tech companies here, said the report. Flipping into a very short break here, lot more coming up on the other side. You stay tuned to Sansa TV for more news updates. एक स्वस्थ जीवन जीने के लिए कोशिश करें कि हम नशे से दूर रहें, लेकिन अगर हमारे अंदर नशे की आदत या जिसे हम एडिक्शन कहते हैं वो पनप रही है, तो समय रहते इसका इलाज कराना जरूरी है। नशे से बचा जा सकता है, नशे को बीमारी माने, इसका इलाज बहुत अच्छे से अवेलेबल है। नशे की लत से कैसे बचा जाए? जानने के लिए देखिए हेल्दी इंडिया। मंगलवार, 
दोपहर एक बजे सिर्फ सनसेट टीवी पर Welcome back after the break. You're watching the news in time now for all the updates from the Russia-Ukraine war front. In an escalation of conflict, Russia hurled a barrage of missiles against key Ukrainian cities early this morning, causing civilian casualties and widespread destruction of civilian infrastructure. While Ukraine denounced the attacks, Russian President Putin called it Russia's response to Ukraine's destruction of the bridge to Crimea. More details coming up in this report. Russia unleashed lethal strikes on several Ukrainian cities. The first strike on Kiev in four months targeted the center of the city and left eight dead and scores wounded. Blast struck Shevchenko district, a large area in Kiev that includes the historical old town as well as several government offices. Some of the strikes hit near the heart of the capital, where parliament and other landmarks are located. A glass business center housing offices were significantly damaged. The blasts also brought the city's subway system to a halt. Stations were turned into bomb shelters for residents. In Kharkiv, people sheltered in metro stations during multiple strikes. The energy infrastructure building was hit, leaving many residents with no electricity and water. Large plumes of smoke clouded Lviv's skyline after a series of blasts. The strike narrowly missed electrical pylons serving the city. Similar scenes were witnessed in several other cities, including Mykolaiv and Dnipro. Ukraine's Prime Minister said, 11 major infrastructure targets were hit in eight regions, leaving large parts of the country with no water, power or heat. Ukraine's defense ministry said Russia fired 81 cruise missiles, of which 43 were shot down. Ukrainian President Zelensky said the rush hour attacks were deliberately timed to kill people and knock out electricity. Russian President Putin said the strikes were in response to the Ukrainian attack on Russia's bridge to Crimea. He said the Russian military launched precision weapons from the air, sea and ground to target key energy and military command facilities. Bureau report, Sunset TV. India, Ukraine and the Western nations have condemned the Russian missile attacks on Ukrainian territory. UK's Foreign Secretary James Cleverly has denounced Russia's firing of missile into civilian areas of Ukraine as unacceptable. Cleverly said that this is a demonstration of weakness by Putin, not strength. The European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen said Russia has once again shown to the world that it stands for terror and brutality. Estonian Prime Minister also said that they are with the victims and Ukraine. The United States Embassy in Kiev has called on U.S. citizens in the country to shelter in place amid Russian missile attacks and depart as soon as it is safe to do so. The U.S. Embassy said that Russia's continued strike in Ukraine posed a direct threat to civilians and civilian infrastructure. In Canberra, Australia, Foreign Minister Jay Shankar declined to state how India will vote on an upcoming resolution at the UN General Assembly on the annexation of Ukrainian territories by Russia.
but he made it clear that New Delhi is against the conflict because it does not serve the interests of anybody. India does not want to say in advance how it will vote at the United Nations General Assembly on a likely draft resolution condemning Russia's proclaimed annexation of parts of Ukraine. Foreign Minister Subramaniam Jaishankar told journalists in Canberra that as a matter of prudence and policy, India does not predict votes in advance. Well, uh, you know, as a matter of prudence and uh, policy, we don't predict our votes in advance. Uh, having said that, uh, you also know that uh, we have been very clearly uh, uh, against the conflict in Ukraine. We believe that this conflict does not serve the interests of anybody, uh, uh, neither the participants nor indeed of the international community. Uh, and Addressing the joint media briefing with his Australian counterpart, Penny Wong, Jai Shankar said Prime Minister Modi has already articulated India's position on the Ukraine conflict. You know, my Prime Minister uh, said a few weeks ago at Samarkand that uh, this is not an era of war. And, uh, 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 you know, a conflict today in some corner of the world can have a very profound impact on, on everybody across the world. And I think that continues to guide our thinking. The General Assembly is due to vote on the draft resolution on Tuesday or Wednesday. Russia has vetoed a UN Security Council resolution introduced by the United States and Albania late last month, condemning the proclaimed annexation with China, Gabon, India and Brazil abstaining. Bureau Report, Sunset TV. And now news from some other parts of the globe. Malaysia's Prime Minister dissolved his country's parliament on Monday to clear the way for snap elections. The move is an attempt to restore political stability as the country emerges from the ravages of COVID-19 and a multi-billion dollar corruption scandal. Have a look. Malaysian Prime Minister Ismail Sabri Yaakob announced on Monday that the parliament will be dissolved, paving the way for general elections that are expected to be held in early November. The elections come nine months before the parliament's term expires following calls for early polls from Ismail's United Malays National Organization. UMNO, the biggest party in the ruling coalition, was feuding with its allies and is aiming for a big win on its own. Ismail met King Sultan Abdullah Sultan Ahmed Shah on Sunday, who consented to the dissolution. He said he decided to call early polls to counter criticism over the legitimacy of his government, the third since 2018 polls. The Election Commission is expected to meet within the week to announce a date for the vote, which must be held within 60 days from Parliament's dissolution. It is likely to be held early November, before the year-end monsoon season, that often brings devastating floods. UMNO's allies in the government and opposition parties have protested plans to hold elections during the monsoon season, which last year killed more than 50 people and displaced thousands. Bureau Report, Center TV. Former Fed Chairman Ben Bernanke and two other US-based economists Douglas Diamond and Philip Dibvig won the Nobel Prize in Economics for their research on banks and financial crisis. The Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences said their discoveries have significantly improved understandings of the role of banks in the economy, particularly during the financial crisis. Take a look. Most of us the 2022 Nobel Prize for Economic Sciences was awarded to three U.S.-based economists on Monday on how propping up failing banks can stave off an even deeper economic crisis. Former Federal Reserve Chief Ben Bernanke, Douglas Diamond and Philip Divick won for research on banks and financial crisis. The trio started their work in the early 1980s and carried practical importance in regulating financial markets and dealing with financial crisis. The Academy said that Pananki showed with statistical analysis that bank runs led to bank failures and this was the mechanism that turned a relatively ordinary recession into the depression in the 30s, the world's most dramatic and severe crisis. Bank runs can easily become self-fulfilling leading to the collapse of an institution and putting the entire financial sector at risk. The trio joins such luminaries as 
as Paul Krugman and Milton Friedman, previous winners of the prize. The majority of previous laureates have been from the United States. Bureau Report, Sunset TV. And a roundup of international news now in Global Wrap. China has said that the root cause of the problems in the Taiwan Strait is the Taiwanese government seeking of independence. China asserted that the island is an inseparable part of the Chinese territory. In a National Day speech, Taiwan President Chai Ing-wen said war between Taiwan and China is absolutely not an option and reiterated her willingness to talk to Beijing. Fireworks lit up the skies of the North Korean capital Pyongyang on Monday as part of celebrations to mark the 77th anniversary of the founding of North Korea's ruling Workers' Party. Hundreds of dancers performed in a main square in the city as a long display of fireworks and music went on. Unprecedented floods have caused huge damage to the infrastructure of Pakistan, cutting off many areas from the rest of the country. Officials said that these floods have destroyed most of the agricultural land in Balochistan and Sindh provinces as well as south of Punjab province, which is the food basket of the country leaving farmers with nothing. Gunshots and explosions were heard in Sanandaj, Iran, as protests continue to take place on Sunday into Monday morning. The incidents come as demonstrations rage on in cities, towns and villages across Iran over the September 16th death of Mahasa Amini, who died days after being detained by morality police in Tehran. A German expert commission proposed a two-stage model including a one-off payment in December followed by a break on gas and heating prices. The break would reduce the gas price to 12 cents per kilowatt hour from March of next year to April 2024 on 80% of usage. The December relief would be worth 5 billion euros and the total plan should cost some 96 billion euros. And time now for all the latest from the world of sports. India defeated Thailand in the Women's Asia Cup match today played at Silhet, Bangladesh. Indian bowlers led by Snehi Rana blew away Thailand for 37. India got to the target losing one wicket with 84 balls to spare. India beat South Africa by seven wickets in the second ODI to level the three-match series. India chased down the target of 279 with 25 balls remaining. Riding on a brilliant 113 from Shreya Sayer and 93 from Ishan Kishan. The third and deciding ODI is to be played tomorrow at Delhi. Cristiano Ronaldo hit 700th goal at Manchester United, come from behind to beat Everton 2 1 in English Premier League. Red Bulls Max Verstappen wins the F1 World Championship for a second time in a row with a win at the Japanese Grand Prix. Verstappen claimed the championship with his nearest rival Charles Leclerc, relegated to third by a five-second penalty. And Novak Djokovic takes 90th career title with Ustana Open victory, beats Stefano Tsitsipas in the final 6-3, 6-4 for the fourth title of 2022. And that's all we have in this bulletin. Stay tuned to Sensor TV for all the latest updates round the clock. Do share your feedback on the social media platforms. Thank you for watching. Good night. Namaskar.